Hey there YouTube land, um, today I'm going to show you a couple of um, light action setups I have. Um, I've made these in preparation for spring for uh, trout and uh, panfish, so um, yeah, let's, let's get started. So the first one is a Mitchell 308. And it's on a Daiwa Underspin US-18 Ultralight. It's a two-piece, four-and-a-half-foot rod. And I currently have it spooled up with six-pound test Zebco Omniflex monofilament fishing line. Um, so, um, uh, the, rod, the reel is a later version of, three, of the 308 from 19... Uh, 78 as you can see the rod um, thinking it's from the late 70s maybe the very early 80s but I'm not too certain on that um, like I say it's a nice four and a half foot and right now I have a crappie tube tied to it but um, if I go out April 1st which I have all from work, which is our opening day of trout season for New York. I may replace it with a split shot and hook to put a night crawler on for trout. So, um, we'll see. Anyway, uh, the next setup I have is a little bit older. Oops. It is a Zebco 66 uh, on a, a Shakespeare Spinor cast casting rod. This is a six foot two piece casting rod. Not quite ultra light, probably more like a medium, medium light. But anyway, as you can see, I kind of refurbished the cork a little bit. It's a little, little piece of stuff right there. And as you can tell, I the butt end of this cracked off, so I stuck it back on with JB Weld. And I accidentally left it upside down, so this kind of leaned forward and dried up with a gap. So I filled that with some. Uh, wood filler. I think this is the Elmer's brand wood filler. And just sanded it down. So, you know, kind of looks funky, but it works. And that's the main thing. Uh, the Zebco 66 was made between 1950, either 56 or 658, until 1964. Because in 1965, it was replaced by the Zebco 606. Which I may show you in another video. Um, if I have the time for it. Um, and also I have this spooled with the 6 pound um, Zebco Omniflex uh, monofilament fishing line. Sometimes when it's limp like that you have to pinch it to, get it to pick it up. There we go. And I also have a crappie jig but it's a sexy tail shad. I have these rigged up for crappie right now, even though I don't usually go after them until late April into May when they come into the shallows. Um, like I said, I may change these up for my typical trout rig, which is just a hook, split shot, with a piece of worm and worm on it. So, yeah, but these are kind of my light action setups that I have. I may even use these in the summer during bass season in case the bass don't want to bite. I want to get some panfish because my thoughts are I want to try to do the best I can and get the fish that I want to eat. If I can't get the bass, which yes, I do eat. I don't want to talk about, I don't want to get into that right now. I can at least get some panfish, which will make just a nice meal. And for those of you wondering, yes, I am mostly a meat fisherman. I am not a sport fisherman or a catch and release fisherman. Um, the only fish I really release are those that I cannot legally keep, or if I accidentally catch something out of season, which doesn't happen that often, but you never know. Um, so, I'm just putting that out there. But, uh, back to the rods. Um, they're both fiberglass rods. Um, you know, they're both good for nice little shorter rods, good for panfish. You know, for panfish, I don't really like using a very long rod or even trout. I usually like to go with a four and a half to six foot rod is my range. So, you know, all my longer rods, like my six and a half foot, 
rods are mostly for bass. Um, so, you know, that's just my preference. Um, so, anyway. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, oops, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.